So today I'm going to be reviewing the Arrow TV show. If you don't know, basically a um, uh, person named Oliver Queen got stuck on an island and he became a ruthless killer and he came back to save his city from the people who are corrupting it. Now, let's get into it, right? Season 1. Right, it's a really good start to the show, right? Really good. My only problems are these, right? First of all, Malcolm Marilyn, right? Right, because Malcolm Marilyn, you won't, yeah, sure, you see hints of what he's planning, but it's not even in the majority of the season, right? Right, most of the time he's just crossing names off the list, but they could have also added more plots about like him uncovering things about like Malcolm Merlin and the plan, like how they did with season two, how they just did, and how in season two they still did have subplots, right? Right, and other and other like small time villains they had to catch, but they also sprinkled in stuff about Slade Wilson. They should have done that in season one, right? He could have been crossing names off his list, and also. And also have a bunch of subplots about, like, discovering about what, what like, this dark arch is going to do. Right. Right. And also the love triangle was just stupid. Right. Right. Um. I, um. Um, season two, season two, oh wait, no, I do, did forget to rate it, so if I had to give it a 1 through in 10, 1 through 10, I would give it an 8.5, if they just included more plots about, especially early in the season about Malcolm Merlin, and like, not, they shouldn't have learned who Malcolm Merlin was really, but it should have been more sub, it should have, early in the season they should have put more stuff about like of like the undertaking and stuff right and season two i would have to give a nine out of ten it is good except for this thing there is too much of it right in the early right i feel like we could have gone like a, like a few episodes just about him like like going after like regular crimes and stuff like kind of how we did with that one gang like how they would retire they were planning to retire but their son didn't want to those people yeah they could have had a couple more episodes about like uh villains like that right because yeah it's right they did fix the thing with season two with early in the season not be not like investigating like the main villain of that season but they also didn't but that's all the season was focused about so like if they had more like subplots about like the all of the stopping uh, crimes and like to stopping st uh, small time villains just a little bit more it would have been perfect right um right um right so yeah on season three i would have to give a seven out of ten first of all they did have a lot of inconsistency like how Diggle would like shoot the League of Assassins that it wouldn't work but then what in, in like one scene he would shoot them again and it would work right it was just full of inconsistencies like that and also how Oliver Queen defeated uh, uh Rashal Ghul is stupid right he learned Rashal Ghul's moves and he used them against them you're telling me Rashal Ghul doesn't know how to counter his own moves he's the League of Assassins like Two seasons ago, this guy was struggling to defeat Malcolm Merlin. He was a part of the League of Assassins. This guy's the head of it. He's he's called the Demon, bro. And you're telling me Oliver just like learned his moves and was just like, yeah, now I can beat him. That that's stupid, right? Season four, I would have to give an eight point seven out of ten. It is a really good season. I'm just going off of memory, and I haven't watched the show in a long time, but. Um, um, but I did really like that how, I, I really liked how they just seemed to, like, skip over season one. Oh, Oliver killed a bunch of people on the list and nothing happened because there were no consequences for him, right? So it was fine, it was actually good seeing, um, like, 
the ramifications of all of his actions in the earlier seasons and how he created this monster or Prometheus. Right. Right, and that's right. And um, I'm not gonna be ranking the Arrow, uh, the Arrow series. I'm gonna be ranking the Arrowverse actually, because I don't remember much about the Arrow shows. I mean the Arrow show. So now let's rank the Flash season one. I would have to get an. I would have to give a nine out of ten. Yeah, sure, it was inconsistent, but it's a CW show. What do you expect? Right. You can tell that the writers still were tried and they cared about the show, right? Right, it was really good, right? Season 2, I'm going to have to give a 7.5 because of Zoom. They treat Zoom like this monster and he is a monster, but that's it. What's his goal? He gets very speed. Okay, that, okay, it's repetitive because this reverse flashing did that, but why? He needs to cure himself of a, of a cellular degeneration, okay. But then after he gets very speed, he just wants to conquer the multiverse for no reason, right? Right, they're just treating him like a monster. It seems like they want him to be this big scary villain, but they just skipped over the other stuff right like with thon you can tell to an extent he does care about uh this about team flash to an extent this guy just doesn't really care he has no like character development like thon had a little bit right right but zoom was just treated as a big bad monster he's treated as like thon but better oh thon opened up a wormhole to go into the future zoom opened up a multiverse portal and he was planning to destroy the multiverse Oh, Reverse Flash defeated Barry. The, uh, Zoom defeated Barry and did way more damage to him and then paraded his body around the city. Right. Right. Thon failed to get Barry's speed. Zoom does succeed. Zoom succeeds to get Barry's speed. Right. Right, it just felt like they were trying to make a villain better than Thon, which yeah, they should have done, but they just skipped over a lot of stuff. It seemed like their main focus was making a big, bad, scary villain that was better than Thon, and they didn't really care about anything else. Right. Right. Um, so yeah, and also a little bit more explanation on how like Zoom's backstory even works. From what I know, Zoom was a little kid and his dad went to fight in the War of the Americas. When he came back, his wife was cheating or something. So he came downstairs and his dad forced him to like watch his mother get shotgun in the head. Um, and he put like, and he took his helmet that they used in the war and put it on him. He was put into the foster care system. And, um, and, um, what was it? Oh, yeah, um, I was put into the foster care system and was raised by the Zolomans. He killed 23 people when he grew up, and then he was found guilty, and he was given electroshock and chemical therapy, where he would be shocked and have chemicals injected into him. And the Earth 2, Dr. Harrison Wells was launching a particle accelerator, but he tried to limit the explosion underground so it wouldn't affect anyone, but it still, but it didn't work. He, w he got injected with the chemicals, got shocked, and the dark matter hit him just at the right time to give him uh, super speed. Right? But he wanted to get faster, so he developed a speed drug known as Velocity 9, which the characters abbreviate to V9. And eventually, he goes fast enough to break the transdimensional barrier and goes to Earth-3. But when he arrives on Earth-3, he realizes that all the V9 he's been injected injecting into himself has actually caused cellular degeneration, right? And the way V9 works is that once you use it, if you're running slow, then it's yellow lining, but once you run at your mass, it's blue, right? Your lining is blue, right? And the end, right, if a regular human takes V9, they can use it for a little while, but if they run at their max, the lightning turns blue and then they disintegrate because of the cellular degeneration. They also have a split personality. So, what I think is that the speed force protects you against immediately dying because it has speed healing and it either completely gets rid of the split person personality or heavily like weakens it. Right? 
so yeah, um, right, so he try, so he kidnaps the Flash of Earth 3 and tries to use his speed to take, to, to like, to like, increase his cellular re regeneration and cure himself, but the most probable explanation why it doesn't work is because he's an older speedster and because of that his abilities aren't that good, so it didn't, so it didn't do anything for him. Right, but he realized that he was tired of being the villain and conquering Earth 2. So he took this Flash's identity, Jay Garrick, and used it on Earth 2 to, like, make a hero fight the villain. Because he was, right? And he did this so then that way he could, like, rip hope from the people of Central City. Right? Right, and he was just about to kill off the Jay Garrick character for good. Or, like, at least heavily injure him. But then in season one, Thon tricks Barry and opening up a wormhole. Barry goes back in time, but like a version of himself from the original timeline tells him to stop. So he stops and he doesn't prevent his mom's murder yet. And and he goes back in time and tries to um, defeat Thon. But then Eddie kills himself, which causes a paradox. Um... And the wormhole destabilizes and it creates a portal between Earth 1 and Earth 2. And he sees Barry, who seems to be a young speedster because he's like running around in a wormhole trying to stop it. So he fakes the Jay Garrick identity to go to Earth 2. His plan is to work with Team Flash to train Barry to make him faster so he can steal his speed and use it to secure his cellular degeneration. Right? Right, but he is dying, so to like help himself live longer, he takes a small amount of the Flash of Speed. He kidnaps the uh, the Earth to Dr. Harrison Wells' daughter, who is working with Team Flash, to do this. But once he tells the truth, they go to Earth Two to get his daughter back. Um. Uh, then um, right, and then Jay Garrick, and then he fakes killing Jay Garrick. Uh, he doesn't do a speed mirage because he says that creating a speed mirage on between two Earths would be in too difficult to do. So he creates, so yeah, Jake, this version of Jake Garrick is a time remnant where you go back in time and meet a, a version of yourself from the past. Um, he um, then uses this to fuel, fuel um, Barry just to like increase the speed, but then trajectory, someone who worked on creating the velocity nine that Caitlin made to like um help cure Jay uh to help cure like the Jay Garrick. Jay Garrick takes it, the split personality develops, she she goes as fast as she can, develops blue lightning, and then they realize it's Jay. Cisco who's been developing like these vibe powers, uses vibes the helmet and sees it's uh Jay. Right, um, right, they go back, Barry goes back in time, and he, and, and he asks Thon on how to get faster, he tells him tachyons, he uses it, but then, um, he zoom kills Barry's dad, kidnaps Wally, and Barry has to give up his speed, but then they recreate the incident that gave him his speed, and Earth 2 Harrison Wells uses the notes that, um, Earth 1 Harrison Wells did to not make that same mistake twice. Um, and, uh, it works. The Speed Force takes him inside and tells, and teaches him a lesson, right? I forgot the lesson, but yeah. Um, uh, right, um, right. And then, um, he, he kidnaps Joe, right? But then he wants to, like, hurt Zoom, right? He wants to kill Zoom, Right, so they lock him up, but then, and they try to feed Zoom with Outberry, but then they, Joe gets kidnapped, and Zoom says that if they, if they race, and Zoom, and he wins, um, he'll, uh, he'll win, like, he'll conquer the Earth and everything, but if he loses, Barry, uh, he stops being a villain, gives up being a villain, uh, releases uh, Barry's dad, yeah, Joe, so yeah, but it turns out the he plans to race on something called the Magnetar, which can absorb the energy that they create, that they leave when they run, and, it, and he's trying to, like, open up a portal of the multiverse and destroy it.
right because he wants to be the only speedster in the multiverse and he wants to live and since this earth is the gateway to all to every single uh, earth one multi-dimensional shock would erase every other um uh uh planet um um but then barry creates a time remnant and then he destroys a part of the device that creates the portal portal but because but these, these things called time rates which like i oh it's like um hot speedsters who mess with time take zoom and they make him the black flash okay yeah see and want to know how i do and now want to know how i know this not because of the show i had to do my own independent research on this right all from the aerovis wookie i think or just fan theory stuff so yeah um so yeah right but it seems like they were just trying to always one up reverse flash and they right they didn't really care about much else right right so yeah um with season three i'm gonna have to give this an eight out of ten controversial opinion but i did like it right like you're just showing how even though barry might be this hero of light even it shows that anyone can go to the can turn to the dark side basically and become evil right right and they didn't sa sacrifice character development for him looking big and bad yeah sure the first time he would uh, fall barry was super bad you know but um it was super like good right but they also didn't right they also included a little bit of like reason on why he's doing it which i really did like and uh, I'm, I'm gonna try and include like timestamps, like so you can skip the backstory from what i know Savitar kills iris barry creates time remnants to stop Savitar. he kills all of them except the one he gets trapped in the speed force and then that time remnant is shunned and shamed because he's not the true barry allen he's an aberration and barry disbands team flash so he goes back in time and replaces Savitar to get his revenge. But if he doesn't kill Iris, then he's never made and he gets erased, so he has to kill Iris. Right? And um and the re right and the reason I think why Savitar was so fast when we first met him is because he was in the speed force. Right, but what I think happened is that the speed force would pull him in, and since the speed force is everywhere, he would move in the speed force, and then whenever he would enter, he would also be in a different location because the speed force is everywhere. If that makes sense, um, right, 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 and we know he can escape the speed force trap for a little bit before being pulled back in, right, um. And his suit is made out of calcified speed force energy, which is what which is what I think makes him be able to live. Uh, it explains why he's just not instantly erased because the suit is protecting him. And the suit can either be remotely controlled or it's conscious on its own because it does hit Barry. Or the good Barry. So yeah. I would, so yeah, season 3 is an 8 out of 10. I really do enjoy it. Um... Right. HR Wall's death scene was very sad, but like, what did he even do, bro? Like, he was just there. He was more of an idea, right? And one thing I hate was that when like Killer Frost, oh yeah, Killer, uh, when Killer Frost kidnapped Julian, they didn't know how to track him, even though, in even though they knew how to track uh, Snart because. He he would give off he would um, whenever he would use his gun it would like give off a lot of like it would like make the place cool so they could detect where it was. Why wouldn't Cisco think to do the same thing with um Caitlin? Maybe it's like oh he was panicking his best friend just turned evil he didn't didn't come across his mind so yeah but yeah um season four. I'm gonna have to give a 6.5 out of 10. Just has a bunch of plot holes. The main villain doesn't really have that much of a motive. He just, oh, the world is bad, basically. 
Uh, he has plenty of time to achieve his goals, but he just doesn't do it. Like, oh, when one of the metahuman victims he needs is just by, him, by himself alone. He just doesn't instantly teleport, take her, take, and like, I'm like, what was it? Take over her body? Like, why? Um, season five with Cicada. I'm gonna have to give a 6.9 out of 10. In the beginning, it was good, except that Will and Dwight's motive was a little iffy. If they just, like, spent more time on that, would have been good. And, like, maybe why, right? Right? Right, um... Right, um... And it would have been cool is that like like let's say the metahumans create their own type of dark matter and take it as dark matter allows him to take that and use it, but it doesn't but it doesn't like fully make him durable enough to withstand all of it. So when he does use it, it does hurt him a lot. So when Barry uh, finds this out, he has to stop fighting so much and has to try and talk it through, right? And it could give us a lot of cool scenes about him using super speed. Right, but not to like as fast as Barry, right? Because the like, dagger can't hold that much. Um, the Skater 2 sub subplot was kind of stupid. But it being all crusaded by the reverse flash is kind of cool. Um, I think that after the script is released, after the flash finale is released, I'm going to try and explain reverse flash the timeline. Then I'm going to explain the zooms in more detail. And then sabotage. So yeah, um... Yeah, uh, season six, uh, I'm gonna have to give a five out of 10. Like the Ramsey Lowe part was good, but everything else was mid. Season seven, I'm gonna have to give a four. They took one of the best comic book characters, Godspeed, and just like ruined him. He didn't have any goal, he just wanted real speed just cause. Right. And there were so many plot holes and stuff. It just felt like they gave up. Season eight, I'm gonna have to give a six out of 10. I can tell they tried a little bit more, and it, and the episodes are better in quality, but not by much. But season 9, I'm going to have to give it a 5.5 out of 10. The only reason because of this is because of that good episode. Like when Arrow fights Ramzo Rosie, uh, Ramzo Rosie, or, right, right, when, um, right, when Barry goes back in time. Right, those episodes, those are the only good ones, and that's the only reason it's not as negative 5,000 out of 10. Um, Legend of Tomorrow, uh, I haven't watched the rest of the season because it just gets so boring. Season 2 is the best. After that, it was just like too wacky for me. Season 1, I'm going to have to give a 7 out of 10. Right, it's right, just not interesting enough, right? Right, that's the main problem, right? Right? Like with season two, you have the reverse flash, you have Damien, you have Malcolm Merlin trying to get a tool that can rewrite the universe permanently, and then season two, this, this guy's gonna do some bad things in the future, we have to stop him. Season two of uh, Legends of Tomorrow, I'm gonna have to give a nine out of 10. Right, the only main problem is I don't get how the spear works. They say it can rewrite reality permanently and it can't be undone, but reverse flash rewrites reality permanently and it, right, but and he destroys the spear, but then they take the time ship, which I don't know why he just didn't erase that, and then use it to stop reverse flash from getting in the first place. If it's permanent, then why could they go back in time and stop it? Right, so yeah. Um, there's probably a theory out there, but yeah, that's my rankings. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed them.